How's everybody doing today? So I'm really excited to be here. I've had a chance to visit with some of you this morning at breakfast, and then last night I stalked some of you in your rooms. <laughs> Literally, I stalked this guy in his room. I was like, are you with the National Dry Cleaners Association? He's like, yeah, 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 I am. And I'm like, okay, cool, let's talk. So I need to know like, about the conference. So I'm really excited to be here. I really want to thank NCA and DLI for inviting me. Um, it's a real honor. Thank you for all of the people that, that are here. I know that there's a lot of things you could be doing with your time right now. Um, before I get into sort of who I am and why I'm here today, I do want to take a moment just to, I want these couple of hours to be super interactive and I also want them to be very valuable for you. I know that you could be out jet skiing or on the beach, but I really want to hear directly from you guys and gals about your struggles and frustrations and goals from the next two hours. Um, so before we start, does anyone want to just kind of volunteer what is number one, maybe a goal that you have for today, and number two, what is the biggest frustration that you currently have around your marketing and sales efforts in your business? Anyone want to just kind of raise their hand and start? Yeah, my man. One is acquiring new customers. New customers? Two, uh, return on investment of my current market. Okay, cool. Anybody else? Nobody else? Frustrations around marketing? It'd be really helpful so I could, yeah. I think finding something that fits um, a smaller operation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes You're wearing them in a lot of different hats yeah. and trying to figure out how to use your time the most efficiently possible. Okay, cool, cool. Yes, sir. Uh, dress down, customers are using less dry cleaning. Um, yeah, that's our biggest challenge is we've been in a declining market since 2000. Because, because people aren't using dry cleaning services as much? Correct. Okay, okay. Uh, dress down and then a lot of, uh, a lot of the casual wear put the washer or the dryer and hang it up and it's run for free. How many people here offer services in addition to dry cleaning? So basically almost every single person. How many people here just do dry cleaning? So everybody basically offers a number of different services. Okay, cool. Can I ask you a question? <coughs> yes, absolutely. Do you use a dry cleaner? Yes. You do? I do. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm gonna tell you a funny story. I was sharing this last night. My dry cleaner, I love him with all my heart. I don't understand a word he says. I walk in, I live in New York City, and he's from one of the islands, and I walk in, and he, every time he goes, hey man, and he hugs me, so I, lo I love the guy, right? He messes up my clothes basically every single time. <laughs> but I love him. <laughs> Why do I go back? Because I love him, and I've been going so long, and he's, he's like 82 years old, and he works 14 hours a day still, and I respect for that kind of hustle. So that, but I do use a dry cleaner. Um, so, before, before we get into the, the meat of the presentation around marketing, oh, yeah, absolutely. How many cleaners do you buy go past before you go to this? None. He is literally two doors down from my apartment. <laughs> Convenience. That's, and honestly, that's why I chose him at the beginning, right? But, but they're, they're, so that's a good question. Because are you like in a place that's not so convenient? It always has been an industry of convenience. Yep. But if you can set yourself apart from your competitors and get them to walk by somebody else to get to them, what you're doing is work. Yes. Um, now, there are three other ones on the block, right? So, like, when I say it's the first one, I mean, like, his is there, and then two doors down, there's another one. And then three, door, three doors down, there's another one. So it's the closest, but there are others on the block. And I go back to him because I like it. <laughs> My friend was like, Brian, you got to stop. Like, your, your sheets are now pink. <laughs> so, all right, other questions? All right, now, d throughout this entire presentation, please, please, please feel free to ask any questions that you have. And I also want to leave some time at the end for questions because for me, a lot of the content that I talk about, you know, is very valuable. But what I, what I consistently get emails about, and I get the chance to speak all over the world about this topic, is hey, I asked you that question, the answer that you gave me actually completely changed my business. So I really want you guys to be selfish and use this time to ask very specific questions to your business because hopefully I can help in some, in some way. So I'm gonna give you a bit of background about me and then we'll jump into the actual marketing piece of this. I have a 
marketing and digital media communications company based out of New York City. We work with basically three different kinds of brands. We work with the biggest tech companies in the world, LinkedIn, Twitter, Credit Karma, KPMG. They're all clients of ours from a big brand perspective. And we help them think through content strategy, storytelling strategy, and then digital media marketing. Second group that we work with is startup companies. Companies anywhere between one and 100 people that are looking to either raise money from a venture capitalist or that are looking to build teams or get new users and they want to figure out, listen, we don't have a lot of money. We want to figure out how can we use the money that we have to drive the result that we want. And then three, small businesses and entrepreneurs. And, and that's probably most of you who have very limited marketing money, if any, but they want to figure out what is this digital media world? The industry is changing. Millennials are now a thing. We got to figure that out. Our older customers, now we're offering more services. How do we get these new, how do we get these new services in the hands of these older customers, right? And so we work with those three different groups of people. And because of that, I get invited to do this, these speaking engagements. And again, I've gotten the chance to travel all over the world. And what I've been able to figure out through clients and through these speaking engagements is that there are some universal themes. And I want to kind of lay those out for you guys and then jump into the Q&A part. Um, you know, I think that whether you want to get people in as dry cleaning clients or whether you want to sell your laundry services or whether you have a new locker situation that you want people to start using, whatever the case may be, there are basically a few different things you have to keep in mind, right? The first thing you have to keep in mind is that you have to identify what is the goal. What is your goal? So I want you guys with the things that you're writing with right now, for the next two hours, I want you to write down right now, after these two hours, my goal is to be able to do what? Right? So my goal is to fig you know, be able to figure out Facebook advertising to bring more people into my locker service. My goal is to figure out how to allocate my $1,000 of marketing to get the biggest ROI. My goal is to be able to tell my story in a more succinct, succinct way. Whatever your goal is, write that down right now. All right, so the second part of this exercise, I want you guys to think about the activity that I currently do that brings me the most amount of business is this. So is it direct mail? Is it Facebook advertising? Is it mouth, you know, word of mouth? Is it knock, going out and knocking on doors of the local community? The biggest thing that is working for me right now is what? To drive business. Sure, yeah, write it down or have it in your mind, whatever you want. Yes, sir. Is I don't know a legitimate... Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. You want to answer? You want to answer? Yeah, sure. Let's get some answers out there. Love it. <laughs> Jump in there. Word of mouth. Word of mouth? Where do you live? LaGrange, Georgia. LaGrange, Georgia. Cool. So word of mouth in LaGrange, Georgia. Sir in the back? I mean, you talk about ROI, but there's a lot of things that you do that you'll never know what ROI is. Correct. Unless it's word of mouth that somebody said, Mrs. Jones told me to come in, or, you know, they say, you know, the girl at Macy's told me to come in. Without that, I mean, you, you have your direct mail, and we do a lot of, you know, newsletters and we spend thousands and thousands on newsletters. I mean, we have a full-time marketing person. We don't know what ROI on any particular thing is. We just know that the whole program works. So when you say ROI, it's, 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 it's really a, 
a number that you may never know. Okay, I, thanks for that feedback. That's really good. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you today some different ways that you can implement digital media into your strategy to actually be able to track that ROI, which is why I'm really passionate about what I'm about to say, so I appreciate that feedback. Anybody else? Yes, sir. For us, the number one, uh, we track every customer that comes in that's new, and it's still uh, number one is I saw your son. Just drove by, geographically we're in the area, that's how we do it. Awesome. Awesome, great answers. All right, so with those, with those goals and those answers, I wanna jump into the actual presentation, all right? And so what I want you guys to think about is that whatever goal you have, what I'm about to say to you is going to be applicable. And if you're, if you're trying to figure out how is this applicable, Brian, then go ahead and ask. But here's what I want you guys to think about. There's three main things that I want to drive home to you all right now. Number one, the gatekeepers are completely gone in terms of how you, what you had to do in the past to get information in front of your consumer. And everybody's attention, everybody's attention, whether you are a 18 year old kid in Georgia or whether you're a 35 year old woman in the Upper East Side of Manhattan, everybody's attention is in one place. Who knows what that place is? The phone. Good answer. Right there, he just lifted his phone up right here. Everybody's attention is here, and every single one of you should take a very hard look at how you are trying to get in front of the person that you are trying to get in front of. Whatever goal you wrote down at question one, you should all think about how can I use this thing right here to get that goal, to make that goal come true, right? And this is why I really want to encourage like, a, as much participation as I can from you guys because the more specific I can understand your situations, the more specific examples I can give you. I can speak abstractly about themes that are working, but I really want to drill deep with you guys. So for example, give me an example of how you are using the the, the, your digital media and the phone right now to drive the result that you want from that goal that you wrote in number one, if at all. How many people in here are running digital advertising campaigns in any capacity? Raise your hand. Facebook posts. Facebook posts. About half of you. How many people are not using digital at all? And it's okay. So everybody's, so how many people are using digital? Everyone. Okay. And what kind of digital are you guys using? Just stream it out at me. Yep. A web page. What else? Facebook. Facebook, Facebook advertising? Not Facebook advertising. Okay. How many people in here have a Facebook public figure page for your dry cleaning association? Or your, so you have a personal page, right? A Facebook personal page. And then there's a public figure page. Your business page. Your business page. Yes. How many people have b Facebook business pages? Good. If you didn't raise your hand, you should get one. And here's why. Number one, because Facebook will not let you advertise from your personal account. You can't advertise, right? And with Facebook, Posts and Facebook advertising, you can segment, and I'm going to tell you how in a second, to an insane, insane degree, right? Let me tell you why this phone is so important right now. Right now, the biggest brands in the world, the biggest Fortune 500 brands in the world are all still paying for TV commercials. You know how much money they spent last year in TV commercials? Just take a guess. Take a guess. How many billions? 13, 10, how many? 200. 200 billion, $80 billion last year. $80 billion last year was spent on TV commercials. How many people in this room watch TV commercials? Three, three of you. Only if what? Uh-huh, exactly. Only if forced because you're fast forwarding through the commercials on your TiVo, and if you don't have TiVo, you're on your phone during the commercials, or you're calling somebody, or you're going to the bathroom, or you're heating up your food, or you're doing whatever. Why does that matter for all of us that are small businesses? Here's why. Because in two to three to four years, when, they, when the biggest brands in the world realize that what? They're actually, like big retail is losing money right now. They're, they're literally going down. And what they're gonna realize is that's because we're spending $80 billion on crap that no one is seeing. So what's gonna happen is in two to three to four years, and that's the window that we all have, they're gonna say, maybe I should take a harder look at Facebook. 
And what's going to happen right now is instead of it costing you $7 to get in front of 1,400 extremely relevant people, it's going to cost you 45 I am all about figuring out how can I spend the, less, the least amount of money and get the most return that is relevant, right? And I know I'm seeing like head shaking. I love that. It's like I know that that's what you guys care about as well. So when I say the gatekeepers are gone, you used to have to pay an expensive PR agency to run creative for you to create these beautiful images and these crazy videos, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars, and then to run your ads for you, another 10,000 dollars, and 60,000 dollars later, the PR agency said, "Oh, you know what? The creative didn't really work, and it was that no one was really tuned in to the TV that night. 60K gone. But now, with Facebook advertising, we can literally, literally segment people that live within three miles of LaGrange, Georgia, that make more than $100,000 of disposable income, that have a family of three that are between the ages of 30 and 50. Guys, gals, do you understand how insane that is? How many people have run a Facebook ad? So the 20% of you are ahead of the game. The other 80% of you are missing an immense opportunity. Because literally, all you have to do is take out your smartphone. This is the thing that people don't understand. Everybody wants everything to be so fancy, right? Everybody wants everything to be so fancy. You know why they want you to be fancy? There's two reasons. Number one, they can charge you more. If I'm a video producer and I say to you, oh, I'll make you a beautiful video, it'll cost you $10,000, that makes sense for me, right? But it doesn't make sense for you because you haven't run the ad yet and you don't know if it works. Instead, you guys can literally take out your phone and say, hey, LaGrange, today only, $1 dry cleaning. Yep, $1 dry cleaning. Watch what you do with this. You take that video, your face, which costed you 30 seconds of time and zero dollars. And you put that up on Facebook and there's a little button called boost post. And you hit boost post and then you go into the segmentation and you segment. People that live in LaGrange, three miles from this location you put in your address of your dry cleaning. That make $100,000 a year. That have a family of four. And here's the best part, ready? Back to your point. And then there's an interest tab. And in that interest tab, you can literally write down the names of all of your competitors. And now if I'm following dry cleaning establishment X, which is a half a mile from you, you are now literally in my face. I am sitting in my bed, or I'm sitting in my cubicle, or I'm sitting wherever I'm sitting, and I'm scrolling through. And all of a sudden, this man's face pops up and says, what's up, LaGrange? And the first line of your creative has to be on point. It has to be, what's up, LaGrange, dry cleaning people? Or, what's up, LaGrange, if you need the dry cleaning for $1 today, come by. And I'm watching this and I'm like, whoa, I live in LaGrange. I'm a couple of, wait, where is this? Learn, see where we're at? I hit that and I'm like, wait, he's a, he's a block away. You see the difference? Before what happened, before you're on your computer, you're on your tablet, right? And you go to www.google.com and all of a sudden something pops up or worse. How many, how many times has this happened to you guys? You have your phone, right? And you're trying to go to Forbes.com to read an article, right? And you go to Forbes.com and then all of a sudden what happens? Samsung pops up or something pops up like holiday retreat, holiday vacation to the Mayan Riviera pops up. Because you just took this trip, and by the way, Google knows that. Everybody knows that. Facebook knows that, right? And you're like, well, I just spent $10,000 on this trip. There is no way I'm going back to the Mayan Riviera right now. And you hit X. But the X is so damn small <laughs> that you accidentally hit the button, and now you're in the Mayan Riviera page. And you know what? You know what? Meanwhile, Mayan Riviera headquarters back in Palo Alto is like, yep, got him. He's coming. And you're like, oh, I hate you. And you're like X trying to X out and the X is still so small that you go to the, like, the second page. How many people has that happened to? Yes. And you're like, I will never go to the Mayan Riviera again. Headquarters is like, they're coming back to the Mayan Riviera. Because for them, it's an impression. For them, it's a click. Right? And they're paying for that. So 
Everything is changing. Everything is, the relevance is changing. And that's, that's actually something relevant. We were, just, we're here right now. What about like a phone that you have no interest in or a cable plan that you have no interest in? And you hit that button and all of a sudden you go to the Time Warner page and you're like, I didn't want to be here. That's old school marketing. New school marketing is Facebook. New school marketing is Instagram. Let's just stay on the, let's just stay on the social media marketing for LaGrange, right? I'll come to you in one second. How many people in here have an Instagram account? Good. How many people in here use Instagram to drive business? Two, three, four. This table is like the, the advanced table, I love it. How do you, let me ask you a question, young lady. How do you answer, how do you use Instagram to drive business in your case? It's just a branding play. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. So we use those images for our directors. We copy them. Right. <laughs> okay. Thank we, you. We license uh, technology that's green, as well as the media and marketing associated with that to affiliates that are in this room. Smart. Smart. And how's that working for you? Good. That, yeah, it so, sounds super smart. We can provide a variety of tools to be able to get them up their digital media. So, oh, it's inter so are, are you guys the one that, that in 2017 did like the whole social media like in a click thing? I was reading on the website that there was like a 2017 launch of a social media, and that wasn't you guys? Okay, no problem. So, um, so that makes sense. Here's, a, here's an even smarter way of using Instagram. You guys ready? And all of you can use this. And if you don't have an Instagram page, please open an Instagram page today. Because here's what you can do. I can now go into Instagram, and if, you, if you've never used it, don't worry, it's actually really easy. You just open it up, and there's a search bar up at the top, right? And on that search bar on the top, you can put in hashtag, and it's gonna be hashtag people, hashtag posts, hashtag places. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna literally go hashtag LaGrange, Georgia. And you know what's gonna happen? Instagram is gonna populate a page. On the top half of that page, there's gonna be top posts, which means there's going to be people that have posted something with the ha in, in the area of LaGrange. And you're gonna be able to see how much engagement that post got. So let's just say I, Brian, posted something that said, crystal, drinking crystal water in LaGrange, this city is so rad. And let's say I have some following, right? Let's say I live in LaGrange, I have a nice following of 2,200 people. Tell me your name. Lewis. Lewis. You are going to go to that man's page, to Brian's page, and you are going to directly message me, right? And you're going to say, hey, Brian, I saw that you love the LaGrange water. How would you like to have a week of free dry cleaning in exchange for you posting about us on your Instagram page? That's going to cost you 50 bucks. I don't know. I'm making the number up. That costs you 50 bucks, right? But you know for sure that Brian, with a following of 2,200 people that live in the Grange, that are all highly relevant folks, are now going to see that. And it's just smarter advertising than putting something up on the radio or on the billboard or on the TV because it's highly focused marketing for basically free. And maybe you just do one round of dry cleaning, right? And then the ROI on that call to action is if you, you know, Brian says, yo, what's your, what's your dry cleaning name? The, the, the business called? I'm mind. Go in there and tell them that you saw this post and they will give you a two for one deal. Now here's the ROI. I come in and I say, hey, I saw that post on Instagram two for one. I want it. That's how you track ROI, right? That's how you track it. And Facebook, same thing. Your call to action can be super specific. Your call to action can be give us your name and your email and in the promo code write Facebook. In the promo code write 2018 is my best year ever. Whatever you want. That's how you start tracking these things. Instagram geography is insane. Right? The other thing you can do in Instagram is, so that's the top posts and that's going to give you the influencers. 
But then down below, and by the way, this works in a big city like LA too. Like this Instagram influencers works in LA. It works, we have clients that have literally 10x their income just on the back of this strategy that I'm sharing with you guys. Right? The thing that I really take a lot of pride in about being a speaker, there's a lot of speakers, right? But everything that I'm saying to you, we are so rooted in with our agency and I'm seeing the results for not only our company, but for all the companies that we're working with. I'm not just reading about some Facebook thing on Forbes.com and coming here and telling you, go do Facebook. Like we're actually making good money for clients and for ourselves on these exact strategies, right? So, that, so that's the top posts. And then underneath that, there's also something called most recent, right? You know this, so like most recent is the most recent post that happened in LaGrange, Georgia, or in Los Angeles, California, right? Or where do you live? In Kansas City, Kansas. And what you do is that's the most recent post, right? So maybe, just maybe, there's some influencer that's in town, right? That has 50,000 followers that's just passing through for the week. You know, Brian's here to give a speech at, you know, Holiday Mart in Kansas City, and you're like, yo, you hit me up. You're gonna be here all week? Let us do your dry cleaning for a shout out. It's just, that is the new world. That is the new marketing. Does that make sense to everybody? Can you define uh, for, for, for myself and yes. what an influencer is on Instagram? An influencer on Instagram is a good question. Is somebody that quite literally has influence that's relevant to you. In other words, if somebody's living in Los Angeles, because I know you live in LA because we had a ch chance to chat before. If someone's living in LA, right, and they have a following that's not bought, and how do you know if it's bought? You literally go onto their page, you start to look at their, their, their pictures, and if they have like 100,000 followers, but 32 likes, they probably bought their followers, right? So. You, and then you can see, you can click on the people that have commented in their thing, and you go to those person's profile, and you'll see some of them have, are like following 5,000 people but have like one follower, right? People are buying Instagram followers right now, so you have to be a little bit careful of that. So, and the reason I bring that up is because that makes them less relevant to what you're doing. So an influencer is simply somebody that either lives in your hometown, right? In Kansas City, I can guarantee you that in certain neighborhoods, there are moms, stay-at-home moms on Instagram that have a lot of other stay-at-home moms following them. So you target that person and you say, hey, stay-at-home mom, Kathy, I noticed that you have a really cool community of stay-at-home moms. You know, maybe her name is literally stay-at-home mom Kathy on Instagram, right? I'm serious. And you hit her up and you say, I noticed that you have a big following of stay-at-home moms. We think we have the best dry cleaning service in the city of Kansas City. We'd love to have you come by for a free week in exchange for you shouting us out. She's an influencer. Kathy is an influencer because Kathy has the attention of the people that I'm trying to get to. Does that make sense? In your case, you're trying to get more millennials. You're trying to get more of like the, the busy professional in downtown LA. I'd go straight for the hip hop artists. I go straight for the hip hop artist and I'd say, yo, I know that you have stuff coming up. I know that you have this and that. Why don't you let us take care of your needs? I know you're busy, you're on the grind, you're here and you're there. Because right now, hip hop in LA and in New York and in Atlanta has all of the attention, all of it. So you, you, I want you to all think about this, right? I want you to all think about who has the influence. And in some cases, it's the stay at home mom. In some cases, it's the hip hop artist. In some cases, it's the farmer. It's like, I don't know, right? So you guys, you guys got to think, you know your market's way better than I do, but if I'm in LA, I'm going hip hop, I'm going movie stars, I'm going musicians, I'm going artists. People that are grinding, that are hustling, that don't have time, that don't have, they can't park their car downtown, right? And then I lit you literally just find them and you direct message them. And guys, if all of this is like, what is he talking about? Just spend three or four hours on Google looking, how do I, how do I work with Instagram influencers? How do I run a Facebook ad as a dry cleaner or as a laundry establishment? You spend three or four hours on this, you'll pick it up. It's, I know what I'm saying is kind of like, I'm talking fast, but I want to get you as much information as I can. Question, then I'll come back to you. Yes? Not to deviate from what you're talking Not about. No problem. But are there people on your end 
that are thinking about a saturation point of all of this social media marketing, meaning, okay, I want somebody to, to promote my business. Well, I walked into uh, you know, Joe's Pizza and, and he's doing the same thing, and so now I'm gonna get a message from Joe's Pizza. So what I'm getting at here is during the day, I might have to do 10 things for, for 10 people I know. Yep. So on, on your end, what is, what are people saying? Like you said, at some point, big retail is gonna sit, you know, kind of shift down. Is that gonna push the little guy out? Yes, it is. Which is why you have three years right now. Which is why I'm desperately telling all of you to do this. Okay. It's, you're, you're, uh, everything you just said is 100% right. The way that you're thinking, I, I can already tell that if you actually implement these things, you'll, you'll be successful, because the way that you're thinking about this is 100% right, right? The difference is, there's two points that I want to respond with. Number one, Facebook is a true marketplace. So you, you get responses based on what's actually happening in that marketplace, right? The TV industry is ruled by five or six holding companies. Like, it's, it's not a fair marketplace. Facebook is a fair marketplace, which is why I'm so bullish on it, number one. Number two, four people said that they have done this Facebook ad thing that I just asked about. So you're worried about saturation, but 90% of this room hasn't done it yet. And that trend will continue and continue and continue because we're scared of new things. Humans are scared of new things. And it's not good or bad, it's just the truth. The difference is, when you're dealing with a true marketplace, the people that adapt and the people that actually try the new stuff are the ones that survive, and the ones that don't are the ones that die. And I want you guys to all survive. Because ultimately, whether you are a mom and pop shop with one thing and you're wearing 10 different hats, right? Or whether you have eight or nine franchises, or whether you're across an entire country, this stuff works. You just have to implement it, right? Does that make sense? Sure. And another thing that you said that made me think of something that's actually, I don't even know if you, if you like intuitively thought this. If I'm living in a small-ish town or if I'm focusing on a community, I actually think working with Joe's Pizza is a really smart move, right? I think Joe's Pizza gives you, a, you know, and, and again, it's like the word of mouth thing, the ROI, unless they came in and said Joe's Pizza, Pizza sent us, why don't you and Joe's Pizza do a commercial together? And why don't you have, so, so this is how I think about things, guys. And this is how I really encourage all of you to think about things. Why don't you go into Joe's Pizza and literally have Joe drop a piece of pizza on your white shirt? And you'd be like, Joe. And he's like, I'll give you a free piece of pizza. And you're like, all right, fine, I'll give you a free dry cleaning. Pizza and dry cleaning this week only. Code Joe, ROI. You run that on Facebook, people come in, say, yo, dude, I saw your commercial was hilarious. That's how you gotta start thinking, right? And that costs you literally nothing. You have your son come in with his iPhone at the store and P Joe drops a piece of pizza on you and you pull out a dry clean shirt and you give it to him and he gives you the pizza and that's it and you put it up on Facebook. It doesn't have to be fancy, guys. The most viral stuff right now is not fancy. Have you noticed that? The things that are going viral, the guy talking about his son being bullied that went like berserk, was him and his son. His son's like crawling on him and like putting his hand in his face. So it doesn't have to be fancy. Other questions, these are good questions. I'm, I, wanna, I wanna see if there's any other ones before I move on to the next thing. You, yes, sir. You keep talking about Instagram and Facebook, right? YouTube. Okay, so. So YouTube, so YouTube and Facebook are competing. I'm glad you asked this question. YouTube and Facebook are competing right now. Facebook is actually trying to build something very comparable to YouTube. It's called Facebook Watch. Just launched a few months ago. Um, you have to get approved to be on it right now. That could change. So it's a, you know, I've been trying to get on it for a little while. It's a little tricky. Um, but here's what I will say. YouTube is fine. I'm a big fan of putting information everywhere, which is gonna be my next point. So you kind of beat me to it, which is good. But YouTube is fine. Here's the problem. YouTube is extremely saturated and it's hard to break out. And YouTube's ad product isn't that good, right? So 
I would say, knowing that these are like, you guys are, some of you are small businesses, I would say focus everything that you can on Facebook and Instagram because you can drop, and I've experimented with this a bunch for myself and for clients, the, the same video that I put up on YouTube that gets 44 views gets 3,400 views on Facebook. If you have a public figure, if you have a professional page, you can literally, and you should, drop in your video, the pizza video, the whatever, whatever video that you have into Facebook itself, right? So literally all you do is you just program your phone to drop that in. And here's another, t another hack that's super important and super technical. Um, if you put a YouTube link in Facebook, so if you say check out my Joe's Pizza commercial and you put the YouTube link, Facebook will bury that because they're competing. They will bury your video. And I made this mistake for a long time. I thought, oh, I'll use Facebook to distribute YouTube. Bad idea. You'll get lost. You'll get buried. You'll get one like. And you're like, but every other video I put up on Facebook gets 100 likes. What? Because they're, com they're competing. Right? It's a subtle thing that unless you're like really in the trenches of this stuff, you don't know, they're competing. So what that means is directly, yes, put it on YouTube, but also put it on Facebook. And the advantage of Facebook is now I can actually target to that thing, right? I can target, tell me where you live again? Knoxville, Knoxville, Tennessee. I can target to every single college student that goes to any university in Knoxville, Tennessee. And they think that, that, they think that, that video is hilarious. YouTube, I just put it up and just hope somebody that sees it is relevant. I'm a huge fan of using your time as efficiently and your money as efficiently as possible. And I just think Facebook's the best way to do it. Cool? Other questions? Yes, sir. Do we need different pages for each location? No. Or nothing like that? Well, oh, for each location. With the, the geofencing and... How many locations do you have? So we have five. I wouldn't. I would just keep one location because you can target, you can, you can create videos that you can target for different segmentations. So under one page, which, what's your page called? Uh, city Cleaners. So under City Cleaners, you can create t five different videos. Okay. You can upload all of them, and then you can boost them to different audiences. Okay. So video one, I'm going to send out to urban. Where do you live? Akron, Ohio. So no, number one, I'm going to send to Akron, Ohio. Number two, I'm going to send to Cleveland. Number three, I'm gonna send, whatever. You can, yeah. But you can, you can play with those five videos and segment differently. Cool? Yeah. All right. You have another question? When, when we're running a Facebook ad, yep. uh, we are not getting a high redemption rate on said offer. There's two problems. Okay. Number one, your creative's not good enough. Okay. Or, so another, so I'm, guys, I'm really grateful for these questions because you're really thinking about this stuff right. People that come to me and say, Facebook doesn't work. I'll, the first question I'll ask them is, how many ads have you run? And most of them have said zero. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> that, that makes sense it doesn't work. Like, I also didn't get any dates last weekend because I didn't leave my apartment, you know? Like, <laughs> um, so that's number one. Number two is uh, they'll say, I've run one, okay? Until you've run like 50 or 60, which is why I'm encouraging you to meet with Joe and do a stupid video and watch to see what happens and do a direct to camera. Do these things as inexpensively as possible because you're testing the creative. Do you like video better than an image? I like them both, but it, I think you have to test that, right? Okay. Some people like images better, some people like video better. I like them both. There are three tried and true ways of communicating and they will be the same basically for all time until we get like virtual reality takes over our lives. There's the video, there's the audio, which we'll get to in a second, and then there's the written word, right? So all of you are good at one of those, I can guarantee you. Or all of you know someone that's good at one of those. If you're good at all three, you're really in a good position to win. But four, at least do one. So if you're like, I hate to be on video, then do a, a beautiful image or do an audio situation, right? Um, so why your, your Facebook ads aren't working is two different reasons. Number one, your creative isn't good enough, which comes with time and practice. Yep. And number two, your segmentation is not good enough, okay. right? So you're not marketing specifically. You're not marketing specific. So let's just, let's just go deep with you. Who, what is your goal you wrote down as number one? Create a marketing system 
system that generates warm leads that I can follow up with. Good. So define warm leads for me. Um, like, what do you have in mind? Went then to a splash page that they enter their email and a zip code that we can fall back on to sign them up for home pickup and delivery. Got it. Cool. So, with that in mind, right, you will have to do a couple different things. You'll have to just either either do a free pickup and delivery for first time customers, mm -hmm. right? Or you'll have to do a funny video that makes them laugh. And I think if you're trying to get to millennials, engage local university students is a smart idea. Have them be the face. The problem, the problem that a lot of you probably have is that you want to get millennials, but you're 70. And I say that with all respect, but like people will come to me and say, yo, we're trying to sell this product to a 17 year old African American living in the ghetto of LA. And I'm like, all right, cool, let me see the video. And it's a 55 year old white dude in the Hamptons. <laughs> and I'm like, not gonna work, man. Just not gonna work. So, right, if, be smart about your creative. And he's like, oh, and Facebook advertising doesn't work. And I'm like, that's because you're 55 in the South Hamptons trying to advertise to a 17 year old in Cabrini Green. Like, it doesn't. It doesn't now, part to double that a little bit. Though, yeah. part of most of our demographic is 55 year old white dude. Perfect. Perfect. It, then find the 55 year old white dude that looks like them. And if it's not you, because you look like you're about 30 or 35, but <laughs> you're like, dude, I, sha I, you're like, I shave this head, by the way. <laughs> then maybe you find someone else. And maybe you don't. Like, maybe, maybe the commercial with you and Joe, who's 75-year-old Italian from Sicily, kills it with 17-year-olds. I don't know. That's why you have to try a bunch of stuff and have different call to actions on all of them so that you can track my man in the back, which I love, because I'm, I'm the same as you. I'm like, yo, show me, show me, show me, show me, show me, right? You can track what drew who, right? Now, for you that wants to do kind of a, get, get them into a funnel and a splash page and then kind of nurture that relationship, there's a couple things you have to keep in mind. How many people in this room have mailing lists? So if this, this, ta yo, this table is killing it. I'm just telling you guys, this table is like, it, all five hands go up for like everything. Well, if you have a POS system, you have a mailing list. Correct. And Correct. But do you use the POS system to, to build the mailing list? Email yes. or physical? Email. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Cool. So everybody's got an email list. So here's, you know, I think a lot about, what's interesting to me about you guys is that it's a service-based industry, right? You're not trying to sell a product or a membership or you're trying to sell like a service. And for, for your business to be successful, that service has to be repeatedly offered and accepted, right? It's similar to how I look at a restaurant, right? A restaurant needs to get somebody in the doors. And we were talking last night about this. Do you know at what point, okay, so from t visit number one to the restaurant, you have, guess what percentage of a chance to get that person back? Five, Almost zero. Okay. Means nothing. The fact that I came in really doesn't mean much, right? Visit number two, what do the odds go up to? Five. 21%. And then visit number three, I'm up at 71. There's a 71% chance that after a third visit, I'm going to have a lifelong customer. Assuming I don't really mess it up. So I think about, now I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if those numbers are. Same for right hand. I was going to say, that's pretty similar. So it's the third time. Three to five. Are you saying that there's a parallel between restaurants and dry cleaners? I'm not, I'm not sure. That's what you're suggesting. I have a bone to pick with you. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, tell me. What's the bone? Well, I think, you know, it's a totally different mindset because you're talking about something that's consumer. They're, they're consuming yes. in their body. Yes. There's an actual physical warmth. If you like that pizza, okay, you're going to travel clear across town. You don't give a rat's behind you. That's true. Okay, you go to your dry cleaner because he's two doors down from your building. You're correct. Okay? You don't really give a damn about, even about the work. <laughs> That's also correct. Okay. So, <laughs> Obviously, I have pink sheets in my bed. So, <laughs> restaurants, totally, totally different no. Well, People will no. not go across town for their dry cleaner. I think that's right. I think that's. I think. I think you're right about that. I guess what I'm trying to. Say, you're right about that. That's why most of us in this room do pick up and deliver. By the way. Okay. So what I'm trying to say though is, 
there is a level of repeated visits that happen. Okay, you're fiery man, I love that. That makes me excited. Um, you have to have a way to track how many times people have come in, right? And I don't know if you have that, but for a restaurant, for example, what I noticed, and this is a restaurant that I'm familiar with that we, t we have some communications about marketing together, what they do is it's a rib place, right? North Carolina rib place. Ribs are everything, right? So when, they walk, when somebody walks in to that restaurant for the first time, and this is where customer service is super important, Ruthie, <laughs> Ruthie is the queen of customer service, you have to know, oh, is this your first time? Cool, welcome. Why don't you come back next time, we'll give you a free shirt dry cleaned and you give them a coupon or a piece of paper or something, right, that tracks. So when Brian walks back through your door a second time, you know, oh, this is his second time. It's too much to keep track of mentally if you're not doing this, right? Did you like that? Well, we'll give you two free shirts next time, right? And you guys run the whole, like, numbers on this, right, to, to figure out what you, what you give away makes the most amount of sense for the ROI for the lifetime customer. But like in this guy's case, it was like three bucks for a free chicken, and then there was like a dollar for a free dessert later, and then all of a sudden like that would yield to $2,200 of business over the next five years. Pretty good ROI, eight bucks for 2200 right? So you have to think about what that is, and you have to think of a, of a tracking system to know Brian's first visit, Brian's second visit, Brian's third visit. If he walks in the third time, I got him. So I would use my POS, I would use my mailing list, to, to start to think about how to track, to get the people in for the first time, to be able to tear them out on my mailing list to know who's visited once, who's visited twice, who's visited three times, because I think the messaging to those people has to be a little bit different. The, the guy that uses the man from Barbados for the last 28 visits, I don't need the same message, and if I got the same message, that you sent you as a first time customer, I'd probably be a little bit offended, right? So that's another important piece of all this, which is message to the audience that you're working with, right? And that's true across the creative board. So when you're making the video, message to the audience that you're thinking about, right? When you're emailing people, message to the audience that you're thinking about. When you're DMing, direct messaging people on Instagram, message to the audience that you're thinking about. The whole idea of like a blanket message across all 2,000 emails that you have, when some of them are coming for 10 years and some of them just came for the first time on Friday, is a bad strategy. People will tune you out. Open rates right now on an email, if you get between 2 and 5%, it's pretty normal. Right? If you get, you get more than that? Sir? You get more than that? Yeah, good. So you're doing something right. Right? Two to five percent is a is a typical normal open rate right now for email marketing. I think dry cleaning is different. Is it? You know us, and it's more of a relationship. And you know, think of any business that a customer comes into your business and you have a relationship with them. Yeah. Dry cleaning is like a one-off thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And they'd say, yeah, the Ration Family Grocery Store gave us this. That's amazing. We might get, be able to get eight new customers, right? Now, we're so obsessed with reporting every single thing that happens in our life, right? That if, if you give me a good dry cleaning experience and I post that on Facebook and it gets viewed by 300 people, you know how jealous our grandparents are? They're like, damn, I had to work so hard to get eight people to pay attention to the, to the grocery store. Now with one stupid photo on Instagram, you can get 300 people's eyes on what you're doing. And the cool thing is there's so much bad news out there right now that if you can give people a reason to be excited about something, then they're gonna talk about it. So think every single one of you, like way like, to the point where, here's what I did. Over, I've had my business for the last six years. I've had a couple hundred different clients, right? I sent every single one of them a handwritten letter with my favorite Ralph Waldo Emerson quote as a refrigerator magnet, right? And I just said, thank you for being a part of this magical journey for the last six years. You are appreciated. And the quote is, to know one life has breathed easier because you have lived, this is to have succeeded. And I wrote, thank you for being a successful person because my life is better because of you. And I sent that out to 200 people. And, that, and I did that with zero expectation. I was just a gesture, led to $20,000 of business. People posted it. Oh, I did, Brian, you're, it's amazing. People are too busy to know what you're doing, right? Like, no, my, my best friend called me a couple weeks ago. He goes, bro, what do you do? <laughs> and I'm like, what? He's like, what do you do for a living? And I'm like, I, I have a company. He's like, what does your company do? And I was like, marketing. He's like, cool. And I was like, bro, you've been my best friend for 12 years. You don't know I have a marketing company? People are busy. You gotta be in front of people all the time. And with the saturation thing, right? So the next question that I often get in these conferences and presentations is this. But if I put my information everywhere, aren't people gonna get turned off? Aren't they gonna be like, oh, another thing from my deal? Oh my God. The answer is no, for two reasons. Number one, because they basically have already forgotten about what they saw 10 minutes ago, because attention spans are like this. And number two, Facebook and Instagram do a pretty good job of filtering what you see. Try this tomorrow. Go on Facebook and like somebody new's picture. Like like 10 of their pictures. What I can promise you is the next day, you're gonna see all their pictures because Facebook knows that that's relevant to you. As, as opposed to, I, the other day I thought, I think to myself, I can't believe that Joanna is not on Facebook anymore. And I go on Facebook and she's been posting like every day for the last year. But I haven't interacted with any of, her, uh, any of her content, so Facebook didn't feed it to me. It's why Twitter is less relevant than Facebook, because Twitter just gave you everything. And it became overwhelming and you stopped using it. Facebook and Instagram are pretty good, so you won't, bombard people. The it's the opposite of what? Emails. Well, if it, I'm a business and I email you every other day, pretty soon you're going to unsubscribe. Correct. So correct. On Facebook, they filter that out. They filter that out. They, 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 they let you know if you're getting too much. And not only that, but on Facebook, you can actually specifically target the people that already want it. Right? right? They already want the information about the dry cleaning. They already want, because I'm already following your competitors, right? Make sense? Questions, yes. Go no, go ahead. Uh, I'll come to you next. Like campaigns. Say that again? Like campaigns. Like campaigns. What are your thoughts on that? To, to get likes on social? To increase our likes. I think it's a bad use of, of attention. Okay, so right now we're doing a like campaign to... Uh, <laughs> well, let's finish it out for me. No, 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 but we are using our email list. Yep. And marketing directly to, they're all, so they're all existing customers. Yep. Marketing to those people to get them to like our page so that we can then market to them on Facebook more. Does that matter? So you want, oh I see, so you want to move your existing email list into your Facebook page. That's right. And the, it, because then you can target them yes. even more. And because of that, you're using a like campaign to get them into that other world. Yes. So it's interesting. So usually what I encourage people to do is the reverse. Right? Because what I get scared about is if you depend too much on a platform, you're vulnerable. Because tomorrow, Facebook can change the algorithm and it can become $46 to get in front of 1,000 people if they want. 
and now you're out of you're screwed because the last year you've been building a Facebook page. So I tell people to collect. The, so all of you that are collecting personal information, keep doing that. It's the only way that you can 100% control the interaction that you have with your customers. Right? Instagram tomorrow can say, oh, that video that you put up, it was copyrighted music, you're off Instagram. And then if you spent the last 18 months building an Instagram following, what do you do? Right? So it's usually, you're doing it the reverse. I'm usually saying, use social to get the information and then use that information to build an actual tribe around it. You're doing the opposite. I think it's fine. Right? I thought you meant like, you were just like asking people to like your page. No, so we're trying to get like, we have like 15, 20,000 emails yes. in our database. Yes. We're trying to get as many of those people to be likes on our Facebook page. Yep. So and how's that, con how's that conversion working for you guys so far? We haven't even launched it yet. It's going to go. Do you two work together? No. 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 But I tried that He's like, I will destroy him. I tried a couple years ago <laughs> with to, get my, to try to get my customers or the campaign to like us. And I still got, I mean, you know, all my, there's like 470 likes, and I probably got 12, 15,000 emails. Yeah. It, 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 I just can't, because my, my kids, are, you know, the millennials are like, well, who's going to like a dry cleaner? Why are you going to follow a dry cleaner? And, and more importantly, but the targeting, I, when I boost, I can see if I want to get 2,000 likes or to reach 2,000 people on Facebook, I'll go in and say, okay, they like fashion, they like retail, they're women, they're, you know, 30 to 55 years old. I can get 1,500, I can reach 1,500 people for 10 bucks. Yes, correct. That's right. I think try it. You know, there's no harm in trying it. He tried it, 15,000 came out to 400. By the way, you're like, I can't believe that. Four, 400 new people into your world is a whole lot of people. Well, I can 470, 80 likes on Facebook. I mean, followers or whatever that follow me yep. on Facebook for five, six years. What I'm way more interested, what I'm way more interested in is how much business did you do from that 400, there's 400 people. The thing is this, everybody's obsessed with likes and followers and all of these things. It's the wrong metric. It's the wrong metric. I don't, I, if I have three likes and those three likes pay me $100,000 this year, I'm good. I don't care. I care about business. I care about the people that walk through the door that pay me money. Right? And everybody's obsessed. And this is why it makes zero sense to me to buy followers. Everyone's buying followers right now because they want to look more credible. Right? When you're in an industry like you guys, it doesn't matter what the outside. Oh my God, there's. In fact, if I see a, a, a national, if I see a dry cleaning page that has 200,000 likes, I'm probably like, oh, they're too busy to give me good service. I'm actually more interested in the, in the small <laughs> dry cleaning establishment that has 300 likes that is consistently posting useful content, right? Don't worry about the likes, guys. It's the quickest way to, to wrap your self-esteem and like, it just doesn't matter, okay? Because, and here's why it doesn't matter. Number one, it doesn't matter because with 300 likes, you can do just as much damage as if you had 30,000 that aren't relevant. I'd rather have 400 extremely relevant people than 20,000 that aren't relevant. And number two, you can still reach new people with Facebook advertising, right? So right. the ones that are there are there. And then there's more to get. Focus on that. Make sense? Yeah. So run your light campaign, my friend. See how it goes. Okay. But don't be, don't be attached to it if it doesn't work out, cool. right? Yes, ma'am. I just had a couple of questions. Sure. Do you feel that Facebook is as relevant for millennials as it is like as Instagram is? Instagram's more it's gonna be key for this group is getting the millennials yeah. you know, their business. And they're probably gonna have to have a different message to millennials as well, and maybe different service. Correct. But, um, so I'm wondering they say like Facebook lots of more stay at home bounds, which is yep. very relevant for this group as well. Yep. Um, but for those millennials Your data is correct. Instagram is more relevant for millennials. The biggest group of people using Facebook right now is 40 to 60 year old stay at home moms. That's the number one biggest consumer of Facebook content. So you're right. Um, and yeah, and so you, everyone needs an Instagram page and then with the millennials, right? That's where the influencer world comes, becomes super important because millennials just wanna follow what, other, what their friends are doing. And by the way, if you're trying to get millennials, Snapchat also is a good strategy. But Instagram is, 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 still, be, is, still, is still best, and you can still run Instagram ads, 
and you can still use, you know, I just think that if I was, if I was in your position, every single one of you, I would find the most relevant 10 to 20 to 30 people in my area that have some following on Instagram and I would give them free service or I would pay them to shout my cleaners out. I just think it's going to be a big changer for your business. So do you have another question? I do and it's more really for the group. Yep. I'm just wondering how many of you actually work with, um, have a marketing or an advertising agency that you work with or if like you're doing a lot of this yourself, like I'm hearing you talk and I'm like, these guys work their butts off. I know yes. so many of them are like, to keep track of all of this and be doing this on a daily basis, you, you know, I'm just wondering, do you work with an agency or do you do a lot of this yourselves? How, how yeah, how many people do it themselves? Well, yes and no. Yep. So I, uh, a lot of us work with uh, Be Creative, which is a marketing company that's owned and run by Dwight Cleaners. They create mm -hmm. a lot of the the, the, like I told you before, a lot of the polished pictures and stuff, and they post on Facebook for us all the time. So since they post on Facebook, and I'm an ad <coughs> on Facebook, there's always ads popping up, only I can see. Do you want to boost this ad? Yes. Do you want to boost this ad? So I do the boosting. Okay. But they'll post they do the creative. They do the creative and the posting yep. forms, and share it on Instagram or Facebook. So all, all I have to do is like, it'll pop up and say, oh, you can see it. Oh, I think that looks like a cool ad. So, okay, I'm going to boost it. You know, you know, how much do I want to spend? 10, 15, 20 bucks, and I can play with the, who I want to market. So mm -hmm. I do that part. They don't do that part, but they create it for me. So the ads come all automatically. Okay. So we got, and then who else? There's another hand in the back. So how, how many people do it them completely themselves? Well, they say themselves. I mean, in house. Like, not necessarily myself. Well, I don't know. What, what did you mean by it? That does it all for you. It follows everything. Yep. Good. Someone outside. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a, it's a mix. It sounds like it's a mixed bag. And then, so, how many people are doing no Facebook advertising at all right now, until after you leave this conference? How many people are doing no Facebook advertising right now? Not, you're not running any Facebook ads. Yeah. There's like a handful. Okay. All right. So, other questions before we go on? Before we go on, yes. You've kind of touched on this. We have found that the, um, what I want to call it, original content versus like the polished image gets like, I mean, it's like a hundred to one. Completely. Of the return. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Even because, if it's because. Like about an employee or. A hundred percent. Because, like because. The video we make with our phone, it's way better. Well, like, like it's a, real. Like a it's birthday. real. Like, when I, like we have a monthly birthday, so I'll take a picture of the employees and I'll boost that. You should do the same thing. You should do the same thing with your customers, and you should ask them if they would also post on their page. Seriously, if you have this, guys, you have a lot. You're sitting on a lot of data, a lot of data. And when I said surprise and delight, right? I'd have balloons for my best customers when they walked in on their birthday week, month, whatever. Right? They're going to put a picture up on Facebook. They're going to put a picture up on Instagram. They're just going to. No dry cleaner in the world has ever given anyone balloons and flowers on their birthday. You have to think about, with very little money, what can I do that will blow the minds of my customers? And I'm telling you, it's easier than you think. You know, I think it would be fun for you guys to do a Facebook Live. Do you know what Facebook Live is? Okay, Facebook Live with your best customers. You, they walk in and be like, hey, um, we're doing this thing. We're doing Facebook Live for our best customers. We want the community to get to know you. Tell us a little bit about what you do, about what business you're in. And I'm like, wait, what? You're going to produce that for me? Now all of a sudden, I walk into your dry cleaners. And you're like, tell me about what you do. We're going to do a little Facebook. Hey, we're here with Brian. He does marketing. He speaks. If you have any digital media questions, hit him up. I'm putting his name right here. And now I'm like, wait, you're promoting my business? I can guarantee you that you've just won me over forever, especially if I get one customer. What did it cost you? Three minutes. Right? Question. Logistics. How do we, as, as people who are not on the front line at the counter, do something like you train, that. You train the counter person when they have a little bit of downtime. And, and I, listen, 
I, understand, I agree with you. You guys are super busy. I have immense respect for the work that you do. Immense. But there are down moments, and like this is, this is equally a, a part of your business as say.